Today I want to show you how to drive morph targets from the sequencer in Unreal Engine like I've done with my little monkey friend here. So the way this works is that you typically have some morph targets and you want to make sure you can set keyframes on them depending on where they need to fire and how much they need to fire. So that's basically the challenge and Unreal Engine doesn't exactly make that easy and it's not really built in functionality, but I'll show you a trick how to achieve that. Alternatives to this would be to use a control rig and then animate the morph targets on the control rig but that means you have to have the overhead of a control rig and write the logic inside a control rig and then put the control rig on the sequence as it might not be overhead that you might not want. A third option is something like a cage modifier but that is even though it can modify your mesh it's not something that drives built-in morph targets So something with the animator kit that is currently in beta you can probably use that but that's more like a cage modifier so it's not quite the same thing so I'll show you how to how to get this done. First, let's start in Blender and see how we can actually create those morph targets or how do they, where do they even come from? How does Unreal Engine think about this? So thankfully, if you're using Blender, anything you set up as a shape key here under the flux capacitor icon, that will be brought in as a morph target by default. So that's quite nice. So I've just created some of these things here with my figure. You can also import them, of course, into Blender, or you can probably export them from other applications like Das Studio, but I haven't really tried that out yet. I just had a thing that I needed to make some adjustments to, and those adjustments were morph targets and they needed to be driven inside Unreal Engine. That's why I made that happen. So once we have our shape keys in here and they're all set to zero, we can go and export this out as FBX. FBX includes those, so that makes our lives a lot easier. I'm gonna call this one here monkey demo. And on the export dialog here, I'll leave all the defaults except for at the bottom here, I will disable animation. So I don't really want that. I don't have any animations here. Under armature, I'm gonna just untick add leaf bones. We don't really have a skeleton, so this shouldn't make a big difference, but I'm gonna go and export this out here. So now inside of Unreal Engine, I've got a brand new level here and I've got a brand new folder here that I'm gonna just kind of call monkey demo, right click and I'll import this into here. So the important thing here is that morph targets in Unreal Engine are only really supported on skeletal meshes. My mesh isn't really skeletal. It was a static mesh. It didn't have a skeleton, but it needs to be a skeletal mesh. Otherwise, Unreal Engine can't really handle the morph targets. I mean, there is a very hacky old way to do this via material functions, but let's not even go there. It's <laughs> static meshes don't support morph targets for as far as we're concerned. So, but that means that in static meshes here, we need to, on the import dialog, we need to go and check force all mesh types as skeletal meshes. And then even my static mesh will come in as a skeletal mesh. Likewise, I also don't want any materials or textures. So I'm gonna untick those two things here. And under general, I'm gonna go and leave the uniform scale at one and the offset rotation at zero, 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 so that it just comes in as I exported it from Blender. So once we do that, a few assets are being created here. Once the physics asset, we don't worry about that. We also now have a skeleton. We don't worry about this either. But if we go and open our monkey demo skeletal mesh here and bring that over, then we can see that we do indeed have all these four morph targets and they behave exactly like they have, just switching off the environment here, like they have in Blender and I can crank them up and I can even, if I have other things that I find, like say if I'm, if I'm working with this and I find I need more morph targets that haven't been specified yet, you can even import others onto this figure if you want to do that. But just be aware this has to be an OBJ and you have to have the right scale and rotation for that to work. An easier way I found is if I have something I want to add to this, I just go back to Blender, add my shape keys here, re-export this FBX and just re-import it from the same file into Unreal Engine and everything comes in like I, like I wanted to. So that's where they are and that's how they come in. So this is nice. Now, the problem is how do we even, how do we drive them from sequencer? And for that, we're gonna have to go and build ourselves a blueprint with this as a skeletal mesh component. Let's go and do that. New blueprint class, actor is fine. BP monkey demo, I'll call it. Also spelled correctly. And once I open that up, I'll go and add myself a skeletal mesh component here and load my monkey mesh over here. Monkey demo, that's it. Perfect, here he is. 
she she actually it's suzanne isn't it there we go so that's that now on this blueprint we need a variable so that we can drive the morph target from the sequencer that's over here under variable i'm going to go and call the first one ear left perhaps and it's supposed to be a float value and over here on the right hand side i'm going to tick instance editable and i'm also going to tick exposed to cinematics and this means that we're actually going to be able to see this float value on sequence and change this value so i might go and make another one here just Control d to duplicate that and call this one ear right and that's the two ear values now if i go and compile this and then go and first of all grab my monkey blueprint into here turn it around a little bit and also make myself a level sequence here put this into the same folder i'll call this one sq monkey demo as well then the sequencer opens up and i can go and take my blueprint now and add it here to the sequencer and lo and behold if i hit that plus icon then i can go and find my properties ear left and ear right and i can go and animate them so let's say from zero i'm going to go and take the other one as well here right they're both zero here and then say at at two seconds let's say they're going to be one or you know whatever i dial into here so as i go and move my playhead i can see that the values animate but of course nothing's really happening with my mesh because the logic to drive these things isn't built in there yet in fact while i'm here i'm going to go and put a little color on my monkey there's something called the mi solid blue that'll do that'll do nicely so for my my monkey here perfect so the logic then it's actually extremely simple all we need to do is go into the event graph and use the tick event here we don't need the action overlap event but the tick event here and all we really need to do here is drag out my variable ear left and get the value and then we're going to go and set a morph target set morph target on my skeletal mesh unreal engine suggests that to me already this is essentially this here and we need a morph target name here which we grab from here so let's say this one was ear left and then ear underscore right was the other one so that was ear underscore left and then we're going to go and put the value of my variable into the value here and that's pretty much it then we can do the same for the other one for the other ear so let's put that into here as well ear right and then of course we need to change the morph target name here as well and this is a very unperformant way to do that but it it works nevertheless and thankfully for cinematics we don't really care too much about that but i will show you a way to optimize this uh, just in a second here but for now if we hit compile and go back to our sequencer this should now work now as we as we see if i press play nothing happens so my ears don't actually move and you know what's what's going on with that so the reason for that is first of all the good news is that on your render without doing anything if you render this out with movie render queue this is going to work already but in the preview it doesn't and that's no good for us as animators because we need to actually you know judge how have we animated our values so for that to work we need to go and switch into simulation mode on unreal engine 5.5 it's this button here the little play button in a sort of a ball type thing and unreal engine 5.4 and below you have to click here and then switch to an option here that says simulate mode thankfully we now have just a one click option here and then if i go and move my playhead nothing works that's interesting isn't it oh it's because i think i know why that is i think it's because i don't really know why that is maybe it's because of this could be that we haven't picked the correct skeletal mesh so it's going to be this and that compile save let's try this again and does it work yes there we go it does sometimes you know it's one of those things so now it works <laughs> don't ask me why so yeah this is this is this is how it's supposed to work this skeletal mesh connects to this and that morph target and this and that variable is being driven from the sequencer and we're gonna see this as part of simulation mode now sadly this is happening on every tick of the game so obviously the reason why this works in simulation mode is because in the simulation mode the tick event is called in regular edit mode that doesn't happen so yes this is this is why if i press stop here you won't see anything happening but let me show you in the final render it comes out that way so the problem with the tick event is that it happens on every frame regardless if the value has changed or not 
And if you have a lot of properties, well, you know, it could get it could get a little heavy depending on the amount of things you have in your viewport. So let me show you how to make this a little bit more performant. And also it's a little exercise. And, you know, let's let's just do all this again, basically. Uh, and let's uh, let's do this by introducing a second variable, also a sequence. So a sequence is something that fires the first branch first and then the second one. So I'm going to go and pick the left ear variable first once again and let me introduce a second variable per channel and i'm going to call this one ear left current and i'm going to make another one which is ear right current and those are just temporary variables we don't need to make them public but ear left current i'm going to go and compare and see if that is in fact the same as the value we're driving with the sequencer. So if that isn't the case, I'm gonna make a branch here. If that isn't the case, and this gets hooked up here, if they are not the same, then we'll react. And if they are the same, then we won't react. So we're gonna take the false branch out and only then do we say set morph target and I suppose this skeletal mesh, don't know why that didn't work last time, but let's go and bring our skeletal, skeletal mesh in here on the false branch. And then we're going to go and set that ear left morph target again. So ear underscore left. And the value is once again ear left as it comes from the sequencer. Now to populate the ear current variable as it is right now let's go and set it and set the same value that we've also got in ear left so let's put that in here tidy this up a little bit and now this isn't going to fire when there isn't a change so this is a little bit more performant and then we can go and copy the whole thing again and build the whole thing again for the right here so it's a little bit of logic that we have to implement here but once it's done you're done with it. So it's similar to what you do in Control Rig, but there you have to actually go and create the Control Rig first and then build that control and then add the curve value. So that's another way of doing it. Let me just go and do the same thing here for the right ear. So once again, right current and right ear. Get right ear, get right current here. Compare them just by left click and drag and then press equals and then we have that. You can also invert the logic if you're more comfortable with that. Left click, hold B and then that makes the branch variable. Put that into here and then we go and use the false branch to say set morph target. And I suppose we don't really trust the skeletal mesh here. We're going to bring our own, so to say even though it did say the exact same thing. I don't know why this works sometimes and why it doesn't. So that goes into here. And then we need to go and populate the right current variable by set. We also haven't set any initial values with that. So let's go and do that in begin play, just so that there's no ambiguity of what that value is supposed to be. Animate right here. And if you want to be organized like I am, then you would go and fold all this into a function. And then you can just call the function on event tick there. So yes, begin play just so that we're all on the same page here. We're going to take the left ear variable and the right ear variable. And we set both of these to an initial value of whatever comes in from the sequencer. So this is left and then this is right. And thankfully, we only have to do this once. And that should now work. So compile and simulation mode. And we see it is, so it's working for one ear. It's not working for the other ear, probably because I haven't set a value correctly. Let's have a look. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, because I forgot the morph target name. There we go. Ear underscore right. There we go. So yes, that is the code. Compile and simulate. And now we have both ears animating here. Perfect. 
we can have one animating stronger from the other at different times and it's, it's really nice you can even set yourself different color values here for that color tint if you want to have both ears to be green in the timeline that is also possible now extra credit if you have 20 or so parameters here that you need to animate they might all look exactly the same they might all come about under this properties section here and that's not maybe not what you want so imagine i also have my eyes and not that i'm going to implement the logic now but if i had them i'll just make a couple of new variables here so i'm going to say i left and then this one is instance editable and exposed to cinematic and then i duplicate that and it'll be i right there is a way to separate these just for visual you know preferences so on on the ears here let me go and switch this into a category here see that this is says default right now but if i call this ears and then put the other ear variable also into the same category here then we see a little bit of separation here and i can also fold my variables together i can also go and take the other two and move them up here as well that's a visual way of doing it just drag them onto this um, title bar here and then we'll do the same with eyes so this doesn't have a category yet so this is eyes and this one is also eyes let's go and drag that on there if i now go and look at my sequencer and add the plus icon i have them split out as ears and eyes so this is really helpful if you have these sections of parameters that you want to move so maybe some are related to the head some are related to the left hand and stuff and you can just group these things together so yes that is how you do that i hope this was helpful i hope you learned something else this is you know a little bit of a workaround and i just recently discovered that i wanted to make a mental note for myself and my future self and hopefully also for you i hope you enjoyed it take care and i hope i'll see you next time Bye bye